Hey folks, Phil the Bee Man here. It's the last day of summer or the first day of fall, depending on uh, what time of day you're looking at. And I'm here uh, at uh, one of my bee sites that's actually on a private golf course. And uh, I'll maybe talk a bit about that while I'm looking through the hives here. But I wanted to uh, get a sense of what's going on in these hives. You can see in this pail here that um, they're taking syrup but not as quick. This, these have been on about two and a half, three weeks. I came here expecting these pails to be completely empty and we were going to swap in a, 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 some extra syrup. My feeding uh, approach is to just give them as much as they can take all fall. And so I've been doing that, but they're not taking that much. So I'm curious about why that is. Um, I suspect part of it is that we have some regrowth uh, and re, uh, revitalization of some of the flowering plants um, because we, after a kind of a dormant summer where there wasn't enough moisture, things have kind of sprung back into life. So you can see the yellow clover throughout this uh, little bit of an artificial forest that the golf course is planted here. And uh, this golf course has kind of a program of uh, trying to balance, uh, you know, the reputation golf courses have for being uh, maybe uh, elitist and, and pesticide happy with, uh, their, with the goal of being a bit more natural. So this is a pretty cool golf course. They have all their roughs planted in native plants and they have this forest. Uh, right in the middle of the, of the golf course. Uh, so anyway, these, these, these girls aren't taking much feed. And uh, I just want to look inside. I've got a couple theories. One is that um, they quit brood rearing early because it was so dry and they started packing honey into the brood chambers uh, before I started feeding. Second theory is that they've kind of fired the brooding back up again now because of the pollen and nectar that's coming in because of the, the recent rains. So I just wanted to look at a few of these, see what's going on. So you can see there's fresh, fresh feed stored in those where it's glistening there, as well as fairly abundant pollen. That's all kind of yellow clover, I would say. I'm kind of right in the sun here. So area of brood is so far not huge. There is fresh uh, pupae and, and uh, larvae. I see even see eggs there. So they are continuing to lay, but in definitely a reduced area of the hive. Sometimes in the fall you can think your hives are in trouble. You open up the lid and you don't see a lot of bees. You can see how the bees have established what we call a honey dome over the top of the hive and they're all clustered in the bottom part of the hive uh, on the open comb. And then in the winter they would move back up onto that honey as they need it. So this hive is definitely kind of in the mode of thinking winter is coming. Bit more brood on that one. 
but definitely, you know, so I see brood. Oops. I'll lay it down here. Here, where, you know, probably a month ago, it was this entire open area. So, you know, a third or less of the brood it would have. Well, what are we what are we learning from this? The frames are heavy. The idea that uh, they're not taking feed because there's a problem in the hive. I think we can probably not worry about that. Um, they'll they'll be fine, even even if they didn't get another any more syrup in that hive I think they'd have enough feed whether it's a high enough quality to get them through a Canadian winter well there's not much I can do about that gotta make sure that the hole in the blanket and the hole in the lid line up So honestly, if they get the rest of that pail into that hive, I'll be surprised. Let's look at another one, but I'll switch around here. This might help the lighting a little bit. But also this hive, we've put a small pail on because it did finish off. There's a few hives that did empty their pails. So we'll see, and this is one of them. So we'll see if this looks any different. My initial impression is this is a, a uh, stronger hive. Oh, and I forgot to tell you all about the golf course. So, I used to keep bees. This, this golf course is on the site of a former uh, monastery. It was an order of Trappist uh, monks, who Catholic monks, who uh, ran a farm. And some of them had bees. And... Uh, they had moved away from this site, oh, when I was a kid, before I ever had anything to do with it. So lots of feed in that hive. Uh. And uh, so I, I had a chance to keep bees on this site many, many years ago. And it was kind of cool because some of the uh, bees from the original uh, the monks had swarmed and, and there was a quite a large bunch of feral colonies living in the, under the roof of the monastery buildings. And on a really hot day in the summer you'd see them all out all over the uh, poking out from under the roof tiles. So I used to keep my mating nukes in this area figuring that I would if those bees had survived for 20 years on their own, that that would maybe be genetics that I'd find useful. Uh, and so I had a really quite a nice bee yard here. And then the property was eventually sold for development and I got kicked off. And then years later it became this golf course and I was invited back again to keep bees on the golf course as part of their sustainability initiatives. And I think that's, I'm just so pleased to be back again, and they've been good hosts. Yeah, and every time I cruise through the parking lot with stray bees flying off the load, I think that'll be the last time they ever want me around. But in fact, uh, the greenskeeper who's my contact here tells me that it's uh, quite the conversation piece, and they're quite... The uh, club members are super keen on it, so uh, that's good news. So this hive actually has, I would say, more brood. Although the first few frames, well, maybe it's the same, it's just spread out over fewer frames. 
uh, and you see, you know, capped honey right up against the, the mature brood and any cell that isn't got anything in it, they're going to fill with honey. So yeah, a couple bigger frames of brood, but then not much on the rest. So this hive is also definitely into, you know, feeding for winter stage. It's hard to know where they'd put another 10 pounds of syrup if I gave it to them. Population seems good. Look underneath this. So there's certainly nothing wrong with that hive. You can see a little bit of syrup is dripping on the floor, and they lick that back up again. And that weighs. Ooh. I would say, I would say that's 60, 70 pounds. So even if they got no more syrup at all, they'd probably be okay. But syrup doesn't do any good in the pail. So I like to feed it to them as long as they'll take it. And uh, it saves me feeding in the spring. So. I think I think we're good here. Uh, the bees have pretty good shelter. Once the leaves are off these trees, it can get a little bit of a cold wind. But uh, oh, a month or so, we'll be picking these up and hauling them home for winter. So we they just need to chill till then. So this is the bee yard I used to use at the golf course before it was a golf course, and. Uh, I haven't been here probably in 20 years, so it's sure nice to be back. And this was the bee yard that the monks used uh, when they were here. So there's been, you know, bees on this site for most of the last century, except for uh, uh, the, the last uh, 20 years or so. And uh, I remember I was a bee inspector and I uh, actually met one of the monks who had bees here. And he told me how uh, his teacher had planted these trees uh, and wanted to hear all about having bees here. And uh, so now that the teaser are trees are trawl and provide great shade for uh, the clubhouse just around the corner. Okay folks, so Dave and I have figured out the advantages of having bees at a golf course, which is a golf course can serve you lunch. So here we are pretending to work, enjoying the day, Bon appétit.